Good evening, everyone. I hope you all can hear me and see the screen. Yes, ma'am. Right. Okay, let us start today's session with a concept, very, very important concept that is view. Views. Views are nothing but database objects. Okay, English meaning of view. This is important to be noted here. View. I hope you all can view this portion of my screen. Yes or no, guys? This is your view, right? The content which I'm sharing to everyone. Yes or no, guys? I hope you all can see the portion of this view which I'm sharing currently. Okay. Now tell me one logical answer, guys. Do you think my view, my view is restricted to only this portion? Or can I see more than this view? What do you guys say? Can I see more than this view? which I'm sharing currently. My view, I'm talking about my. Yes, more, good, more. Okay, I want you guys to see only what is required. I want to hide the unnecessary data or that data I don't want you guys to see. The same thing is implemented via view. Okay, view is a database object, mainly used for reporting. Okay, we use view for reporting, making complex query easy. And mostly it is used for data hiding. If we all are accessing one table, guys, okay, I don't want all the people to see all the columns that are defined on that centric table. I would use this view. Okay, so let us talk about views. Let us know how to create a view in this session. I hope everybody got the basic implementation why we create a view. View can be considered as same as table. Okay, if you call the view guys with the help of select statement, you will see the output as we were saying when we were calling the table. But there is a slight difference that view doesn't contain data of its own. That's the main thing to be focused. View do not contain data of its own rather than it is just displaying the data from the table which is created from which this view is created so let us create a view now the second would be how to create a view create view can be created with the help of this statement create view we will i will be creating a very simple view guys and my target table will be that emp1 so let us see the content of EMP first of all. Select start from EMP. Yeah, this is the content of my table. I don't want other people to see this crucial column that is salary and the commission. I don't want everybody to see this. So what I will do, I will create a view of this particular table. So let us go and create a view. Create view. Create view is a keyword. The name of the view, I'm creating EMP's view. So just the random name I'm giving, guys, EMP view. If you want, you can give EMP information. View is always created with the help of a select statement. Select EMP NO, E name, department number from EMP, where department number is equal to 10. This is my simple view definition. Let me execute control enter. If you see guys, my view got created successfully. Select star from EMP underscore view. Control enter. Oops, sorry. Info. Okay, so see guys, that view, I'm calling this view, which is created with the help of this select statement. Actually, this view, whenever you execute select star from EMP info, actually, this select statement is executed. And please observe the where clause. Those people who are working in department number 10, okay, are only displayed. This is view. A very simple definition of view. 
is this clear to everyone now what is this type okay because the second question would be there are types of views guys types of view the very first view which i created guys is made up of only one table the view which we are defining is created on the basis of only one table one table is there any group function can anyone here see a group function here view is defined by a select statement that's the definition of this view okay coming back to the question guys anyone here can see a group function which we covered in the last session is there any presence of min min function max function is there any function guys i hope you all can see i didn't use any function while defining while creating this view there is no presence of group function even you can see there is no group by clause there is no presence of group by clause here okay this means that what view i created is a type of a simple view we created a simple view okay now what why i am focusing on this particular simple view word because guys there are two types of view that can be created one type is a simple view simple view is that view in which we can perform the dml operations we can perform the dml operation let us go and check whether i can perform a dml operation here please remember the fact that this view doesn't contain data of its own please remember that so let us go and create a row insert into emp info values i am providing values so for the sake of example i am giving 12 giving a name as alex and the particular person is working in department number 10 control enter i would like to see my action output please see that the row got successfully inserted into alex so this does this means guys alex got saved in emp info what do you guys say did we inserted in this particular view yes or no okay but i would like to correct the statement guys obviously i am using a insert statement but this particular row is not saved inside this view actually from this view we are dumping the data in this particular table is this clear to all of you i inserted this row through this view but actually this row got saved into the base table if you want we can check select start from emp this is my table data we'll try to find out alex please observe alex here is this clear to all of you with the help of you actually we did a manipulation in the base table now what will happen if i directly insert into emp insert into emp emp you know uh, salary department number values so let me give a value 13 ben earning a salary 3000 but working in department number 10 control enter let us verify whether ben got inserted please see ben got inserted now i would like to check whether this row is reflected into the emp view please see so whenever there is a change in the base table if that change lies in the scope of this particular view definition that row will be reflected in the view is this clear guys view okay good now when we talk about simple view i hope you can see which view we created in that particular view we did a dml call insert you can normally do insert update and delete on the simple view which is created with the help of only one table there is no 
function no group by even there is one more concept that is called there is no joins guys you cannot we are not able to see any joins being used in the views definition now tell me one thing guys what if what if if i try to insert a row not in emp but in info table Should this insert happen successfully, guys? Should this insert happen, or should this insert be not allowed? What do you guys think? We are given only the rights for people who are working in department number ten, and I'm trying this kind of action. The the person john does not belong from the department from 10 department so tell me guys is this right kind of in insert operation or very wrong type of in insert operation anyone here would like to guess any answer okay now let us discuss why it is right or wrong? How do I judge whether this is wrong? See, guys, view is for data hiding. Okay. The person who created a view for me, that person wants me to govern only those people who are working in department number 10. If a person gets hired in department number 10, so I will be able to insert the value here. Okay. That is with respect to my scope. But I shouldn't be able to do these kind of insert statement. One thing, because if this insert statement happens successfully, guys, it will not be reflected in the view definition. It will be directly saved in this base table. Okay. So can I say this is invisible row for my view? What do you say? Don't you think this will be a kind of invisible row I'm creating for my view? Yes or no, guys? Okay. So this is wrong. It's out of our scope. Our scope is only those people who are working in department number 10. Now, see, we all came to a condition that this statement is incorrect and should give me an error. Okay, let us see. Yes, out of range. Correct word. Now, guys, I will try to execute this. Let me see whether my simple view is smarter enough to stop this from being happening. Control enter. Tell me, guys, whether the insert statement got successfully executed. Yes or no? Did it got executed? Please see. There is a green tick. If you want, I can show you from the base table calling EMP. Select star from EMP. We can check this. John, please see. John got successfully inserted. We all mentioned that this is wrong. But still it happened, guys. Because my view definition is very simple. Okay, nobody is there to check the where clause violation. Because this is a where clause which need to be fulfilled. Okay, is this clear? Is the problem clear to all of you? Please answer. Okay, now what I would like to do is to prohibit these kind of insert from being happening. I want to stop this from being happening. So what I will do, I would like to change this particular view definition. Okay, view definition, when I, whenever guys I say view definition, I meant to say the select statement. The definition from which the view is created, I would like to change it. So guys, tell me one thing. What if I write the statement again? Create view. I will discuss this later on, guys. Okay, please remember the concept. What I'm trying to do here is I just want to change the definition of the existing view. So tell me, guys, whether will this statement execute? 
will this statement execute okay hash is just simply there whenever i want to write something like it will uh, not allow okay so i want to comment this that's why i used hash in front of this okay now coming back to my previous question will this statement execute okay most of you are saying no yes very true because see please read the statement what we are implementing create view emp info don't you think already the view is present here i will definitely get an error saying that the view is already there please see emp underscore info already exists okay now please let me know i just want to change this view definition okay so what is the ddl which we should use to change the definition any guesses i hope you guys remember we talked about ddl in the very first session anyone here can tell me that command with the help of which i can change the definition update modify Okay. Alter. Good. Alter. Okay. Let me try the alter. Okay. Alter means changing the definition of the view. Sorry. Alter view. EMP info. Okay. Rest of the thing is same. Control enter. Did the code executed, guys? What do you think? Did it got altered? Okay. Now we want to test this because see, I wrote three word after the where clause with check option. Okay. Basically, guys, this with check option has two properties. First is by default it implements cascaded property here now what is the meaning of cascaded whenever you try to violate the view this is the property i'm talking about cascaded and one property is local okay cascaded by default the property which is implemented is cascaded but when if you try to implement local it is not implemented in the latest version it was still 5 my sql 5 version this local was supported from 8 even if you try to write local by default cascaded will be implemented now what is cascade before moving on to the cascade and local let us focus on what do you mean by with check option okay with check option will keep an eye that we don't manipulate or don't change the where clause can you see the condition deptno is equal to 10 i would like to give it a try of inserting one more so see this guys this is the where clause okay where department number is equal to 10 i'm writing 30 i'm inserting for john let me write james giving a different id 14 please see the department number is other than 20 okay cascaded by default control enter did it happen guys please check did my insert happen this is what the role of with check option with check option checks that we don't violate the where clause whatever you define here it requires that you don't create an invisible row every time you will be allowed to create a row okay with all the options that are there is this clear to all of you what is with check option here to make the dml to keep your dml inside the definition of the view if you are working if your role is to govern only people working on department number 10 your dml should remain in the scope is this clear to all of you with check option any questions here
Okay, no problem. Basically, uh, when we talk about view, guys, view is a subset. Can I say it is a subset of data? EMP has 14 rows, but my scope, okay, my privilege are to view only those people who are working in department number 10. So whenever I am performing some DML operation, it should remain in the domain. Okay. It should work only on the people who are working in department number 10. This is the implementation. But if you have observed the action, I tried to insert an employee who is not working in department number 10. It got successfully executed. I didn't want it this to happen. Yes, you can use any condition in where. That's your choice, okay? With check, will only check the condition whether it is implemented or not. I hope Ravit is clear. Now, this was a very incorrect type of insert which I did. I created a value, a data of that employee who do not belong from this department, guys. So my view is out of the scope. I don't want this to be implemented. I want that whatever DML I do, it should remain or it should get implemented only on those people who are working in department number 10. That's why what I did, I implemented a with check option, which will keep an eye if I am violating this where clause. I'm not supposed to insert any employee who do not belong to department number other than 10. Is this clear to all of you? What with check option is implementing? Okay. Okay, great. Now, please remember the fact that I used an alter statement to manipulate the views definition and change it. Now, tell me, guys, what if, if I forgot a column here? I want to add a column here. So should I drop the view and create it once more? What do you guys say? I forgot to mention a column here for this EMP view. Should I drop the view and recreate it again or should I use alter? Okay. Okay. Now, one thing. What will happen if I will drop this EMP info? Will we lose data, guys? What do you guys say? What if, if I drop this view now, will we lose this whatever data I created? Okay. I'm getting an answer like data will be lost. So I would like to drop this first thing. Okay, to, before dropping it, I would like to check whatever data is there in the view. So, let's first call that view. Select star from EMP info. <clears throat> See guys, I created Alex and Ben. Okay, James was not there. So, we will try to find out whether Alex and Ben are still retained. So I'm dropping this, control enter. My view got dropped successfully. We will go here. Is there Alex Ben? Can you guys see Alex Ben still retained? Now tell me one thing guys, when I dropped the view, did we lose any type of data? So this is very important thing to be noted that view doesn't contain data of its own. I'm repeating it. It is just shows the data that is dumped in the table from which it is created. The technical term for this thing is base table. Right? No loss of data. No duplication of data. This is the highlight thing of the view. Okay? Now I would like to go back and create the view again. Okay? This was the statement. Uh, control enter. Checking it. This is the thing here. Now tell me guys one more question here. What will happen if I drop EMP table? Will the view go with it? 
what will happen if I drop the table from which the view is created? Will the view go with it? What do you guys say? It should go. No. Okay. Good. One answer. Okay. See, view and the table's connection is only the fact with this, right? The connection between the table and the view is this. This select statement is connecting it. Okay. So, guys, whenever you will be dropping the table, okay, one, please listen carefully. If you will dropping the table, okay, view will not be removed from the database. It will be still there. Is this clear to all of you? When you drop the base table from which the view is created, okay, view will still be retained in the database. It will not be removed, but the view will be useless for us. You will get an error saying that the view, okay, the view which is created has an invalid specification of column or table. Is this clear to all of you? This, this would be a home task, guys. Okay. You will create a view from a table. You guys will drop a table and then check the whether the view is available or not. My answer is the view will still be retained by the database, but that view will be no longer useful. Okay. Clear to everyone? Okay. Let me remove this from here. Okay, so this is a simple view, okay, which has a very important concept with check option, which keeps an eye on the where clause so that our DML do not go out of the domain, okay? Second thing, I, I said that I forgot to mention a column here. You all suggested me to use an alter here so that the column is then added to the view. So I would like to check my views definition. Please see, I don't have a column additional column, I want to add a job column. Rather than using alter, guys, there is one more concept from which you can change the views definition. Okay. How? Create view EMP info as, and I'm copying the select statement from till here. And I'm pasting it here. And I want only one column to be added, that is job. No, not update, okay? See, if I try to execute this, I might get an error saying that the view is already defined here. There is one more keyword, guys, with the help of which you can redefine the, redefine the view with a new select statement. What is that? Or replace keyword. Now, what is the meaning of create or replace? Whenever I try to execute this 21st statement, guys, what will happen? Your MySQL will first try to create a view. If the view is already present in the database, it will replace the old definition of this view to the new one, whatever we are specifying. That is the main implementation of our replace keyword. Is this clear to all of you? Please see. My view now got created with a new definition. Please see, the job is added here. That's the implementation of or replace. Remember one thing, guys. Okay. In MySQL, alter view is there. But in most of the database, you will see create or replace view. Is this clear to all of you? Okay, great. Okay, now this was all about simple view. Okay, simple view is created with one table. There is no function, no group by joins, but insert, update, delete are implementable. Okay, but we have to follow some rules. Now, we talked about or replace, we talked about alter. Alter works in MySQL, but create or replace will work in most of the database versions. 
Now let us talk about a view which is used for only reporting purposes. Okay. So guys, see, I have a normal task like this. Select. Now tell me guys, is this a simple select statement or complex select statement? What do you guys say? Is this a simple for you guys or it is a complex select statement? Okay, guys. So, see, uh, please do what is the select statement uh, reflecting as? Please understand the select statement. Actually, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find out the people working in each department and what is the total expense on this particular department. Okay. So, every department has some number of people working in it and I'm getting the total expense. This is a very complex statement which is used for reporting. And this is my daily task, guys. Whenever I'm coming, I'm just recording this okay so see every time i'm writing this code what i will do the easiest shot is short trick is to copy this paste it in a file and in the next day copy it from that file paste it here and execute this particular statement i think this is the short, uh, shortest implementation will you all agree with this answer i will save it in a file and then copy it paste it here and execute do you think it's the good way a simpler way. Okay. Yeah. Good. Now, why we are doing that kind of implementation? Why don't we save the select statement inside the database? Okay. Why don't we select this particular complex select statement inside the database and give it a name? Okay. My intention is to create a view. Create view. Uh, EMP DEPT info. As. So I'm creating a view with this particular select statement. Let us execute, control enter. Let me check whether our view got created. Yes, our view got created successfully. So tell me guys, writing select star from this is easier. Yes or no? A very easy rather than writing this particular complex code. What do you say? Okay, this is easier rather than writing this. Now, please observe the view definition. Okay, this view definition has group function, has join, group by as well. This is a very complex function. Okay, now, whenever guys, you see that the view definition has more than one table, Okay, more than one table, it has join, it has functions in it, it has group by definition, then that type of view is known as complex view. There are two types of view, simple view and complex view. Complex view are those view in which DML are not allowed. Okay, any type of DML, if you try to perform on this view, it will lead to an error. Okay, there is one more word defines complex view. It is a non-updatable view. Complex view is called as non-updatable view. Simple view are called as updatable view. Is this clear to all of you? This type of view is always used for reporting let us check how it helps us what i will do guys i will insert 
in the emp table again an id a name a salary the department number where that person is working before executing this i would like to record this this is the output which we are seeing so i'll copy it here paste the output here so that we have a reference this was the old definition and now i'm trying to insert here okay values 15 Stephen and he is earning 2000. He is working in department number 30. Let us execute. Control enter. Just like to verify whether insert got successfully implemented. Please see it got successfully inserted in this. Now let us go back and call this view. Now tell me, guys, something changed or not? Anyone here who is observing any changes in the output? Yes. Okay. Whenever a person got hired in any of the department, the total expense was added to the sales department and the count was incremented. This is the main implementation of you. By writing a very simple select statement, we are getting a very complex output. That is view reporting. Now, what I will do, I will try to insert in this particular view a DML onto this view. Insert into EMP DEPT. Sorry. Info value. Okay. The very first one is five. Okay. Second one is total. And the third one is department. Keeping in mind that there is no HR department in the DEPT table, guys, okay? That's why I'm giving a very new department. Control enter. Please see that. The target table EMP DPT info of the insert is not insertable into. This is the error. I told you guys, this is a not updatable view. Even if you try to update, see, insert was a logical type of action to be implemented. What if, if I try to update this particular? Uh, let us set the very first, that is count of EMP. Count EMP equal to 10. Sorry, just misspelling. Where D name is equal to sales. Please see. So DML operation is not allowed in a complex view. Is this clear to all of you? Okay. So this is complex view. Most of the time, complex view is normally guys used for reporting and make the code easier for those people who are not so good at SQL to make work easy. Second thing, guys, just answer this. I'm just creating a simple view in which has the employee number, e name, salary into 12 is an annual salary. That's why I wrote unsal. Control enter. Now tell me, guys, is this a simple view or complex view? What do you say? Is this a simple view or complex view? I'll just I just want to scroll it down so that you get the definition of simple and complex. I wrote it here. I'm pasting it here. Now please tell me by C. Simple view, simple view, okay. So guys, I think if this is a simple view, this DMLs are allowed, what do you say? In simple view, DMLs are allowed, yes or no? Okay, so let us test. Please remember, 
in emp do we have this column guys in emp do we have this column salary into 12 what do you say okay now we don't have and i hope you all know that we don't have sal into 12 but still what i will do i will insert insert into emp view uh, values mm, let me give a new value 66 the name uh, let it be a and the salary keeping in mind i'm giving this value please check the output which i'm getting okay one thing we have tested insert didn't happen successfully okay because can you see guys this is a calculated column this is not present it is being calculated that's why i'm getting an error this column is not updated okay then let's avoid this okay what we will do we will insert this value which will be saved in this base table then we will go there and give him a salary no problem let us try to insert this when you are doing so keep in mind that you have to specify the column we have already discussed this did the insert again happen guys this is to be noted here okay i'm not able to insert the second option would be update okay update emp view set let me change the name okay name is equal to something with the uh, If you want, we can check whether Scott is there or not. Okay. Select start from EMP view. I'm checking for Scott. Okay. I hope everyone can see the Scott. Scott is present. Yes or no, guys? Okay. Now, let me execute and let's see. Control enter. Please see. Okay, I updated in a normal column, okay, which is created in this view. The update got successfully implemented. So I can update this value, I can update this value, but I cannot play with this value. Okay, so please remember, guys, whichever column you are calling in a view, and if it is a calculated column, please don't do any type of DML. Is this clear to all of you? Okay, but still, what category should I put this column? Is it a sim? Again, I'm asking guys, it is a simple view or a complex view? What do you guys suggest? Very good, guys. Complex. It's a complex view. When we talk about complex view, a complex view can be created with one table as well, guys. Okay. It can be having, can be created with more than one table if there is a presence of join. Whenever there is a presence of join, guys, the DML will be not allowed when we consider uh, views. Is this clear to all of you? Good. So, views are database object which is used to reflect the data from another table views are used for data hiding and views are the most important component of this database one thing guys if i have a view v1 and i created a view 2 on the basis of this can it happen view based on a view because if you remember i created a view on emp that was emp view can i create emp view 2 that is being emerged from this is it possible view based on another view what do you say not clear let me explain see i'm just creating a view view 
emp info view as select start from emp this is view emp info view let us see okay control enter you have an error so sorry control enter please see that my view got created successfully view now what i'm doing i'm creating another view emp info view 2 as select star from see this emp underscore info underscore view actually i'm trying to create a view based on another view now i hope everybody is cleared with the concept what what i was trying to implement here yes or no guys Okay, now the answer is yes, the view will be created successfully. Please observe. Okay, you can create view on another views as well. Clear everyone? Okay, good. Any questions on view, anyone? Views. Any question? Yes, that's short form, view, VU. Normally, you will not find these terms, okay? Because see, guys, we are talking about data hiding. You will never know whether you are accessing a view or a table. It will be simple as the tables which we, you have learned. Okay. So, this was all about views, guys. Alter, remember this, guys. In most of the database, alter don't work. Alter works in MySQL. So, mostly, please try to focus on create or replace. That's a implement. Changing the table's data. That's the thing. Okay. And yes, view increase the performance. That's the thing. Okay. Whenever you are focusing on performance, view will definitely increase the performance. Okay, I hope everybody is comfortable on view. Yes or no, guys? Can I have a feedback? Okay, great. Now, let us talk about another database object which is useful. Okay, that is nothing but Sequence. Anyone here who knows something about sequence? What are sequence if I ask you guys? Anybody can answer? Yes, good. Okay, great. Sequence. Sequence means very basic English meaning of sequences one after the another. Yes, order of something. That's a sequence. But in MySQL, when we talk about sequence, when we say this word, we are talking about numbers that are generated in sequence. Okay, integer values that are generated. Okay, and please remember, guys, in MySQL, sequence will always be an integer type in nature and it will always start with one. That's the thing. Now, I hope you guys understand the fact that, that uh, those columns, okay, like ID, it should be generated automatically, right? The ID should be assigned automatically to a particular employee. When you need that a particular column should be auto-generated with numeric value, then you can use this sequence concept in MySQL. So let us create sequence. Create table. I'm just giving a name, guys. Sample. Create table. Sample. Or oh, we can give it a new name called. 
in this particular sequence, I have an ID, sequence test table, I have an ID with an integer type. This column should be automatically assigned value. To implement that, we use an attribute called auto increment. Auto increment. I assigned auto increment to ID. My intention are very clear. I want the ID's value to ID should be automatically generated. I'm putting a comma here and I'm writing some another column name of character type with 12 characters assigned. Now, this statement will not execute, guys. Okay, because there is some limitations, some rules when we talk about auto increment value. Let us see what are the rules. Control enter. I got an error saying that table definition, incorrect table definition, there can be only one auto column and it must be declared or defined as a key. Now, the rule is simple, guys. Whichever column your intention is to assign an auto increment attribute, that column should either be defined as a primary key column or a unique constraint. These are the rules. So the missing term is nothing but the declaration of primary key. Now let us give it a try again. Control enter. Please see the statement got executed successfully. Let's start giving a value. Please note the fact that I'm providing only value for the second column, name column, control enter. The statement, the insert got successfully implemented. Select star from. We didn't provide any value for the ID column, but because of the presence of auto increment value, it got inserted. Is this clear to all of you? Very simple. Can we insert null value in primary key column? Right. But still, if you observe, I'm trying to implement, execute this particular statement. No, we cannot have primary key. Okay, primary key has a combination of not null and unique, guys. Not null plus unique. Okay. This means that primary key can never have a null value, okay? We use auto increment so that the column should be assigned values automatically. This is what I'm trying to implement here. By default, it will print what? No, no, I hope. No, no, no. See, if you're not using this auto increment attribute here, are you saying like this? If we don't use this auto increment here, it will be automatically incremented if I use primary key. Ravi, are, are you saying like this? If we don't use this auto increment, so the ID will be automatically initialized. Are you saying like this? Okay, on what basis you're see, uh, saying like this? Because of the presence of primary key? Are you saying because there is primary key there? Okay, okay, fine. See, what is primary key should be understood first, okay? Primary key is nothing but a type of a constraint whose role is to govern the data that is being generated. That's only the implementation, okay? Primary key do not do anything automatically, okay? 
primary key remember this primary key only governs the data that is being generated see this is an example which i want to take we will check primary keys see there is no dip saying it as dependent would be wrong okay actually we are assigning a rule on the column rule on the column this column will always have different values and it will always have a value you cannot keep it empty control enter c if you are asking me for default so what i will do i will insert a value insert into employees uh purposely i'm just giving a name here and again inserting a value here i hope you remember that this statement got successfully implemented the same thing i'm using here let us execute please see this okay please see the output that my insert statement didn't got executed because i was trying to insert a null value in this column okay the same thing was happening here but i use this auto increment attribute or property with the help of which at the time a was being inserted this number was generated and it was successfully inserted here that's why we didn't got any error in this okay primary key will not generate automatic integer this is a role of auto increment i hope ravi you got it okay great okay anyone here who would like to ask anything with respect to primary key no problem i hope everybody is cleared with this primary key and unique constant yes or no guys okay great uh, let me remove this from here <laughs> okay we were talking about this null okay null and b primary key will not allow any null to be inserted control enter please see that this row got successfully executed why because there was a presence of auto increment how many tables we can give primary key see in our database if you have 100 table you can give it but it is not logical okay it's your decision to which column you want to sorry which tables you want if you have 100 table if there is a requirement you can assign primary key to all the tables i would like to rephrase your question in a table how many columns can have a primary key that would be better question anyone here can answer this question in a table how many column can we have primary key assigned yes good right good yeah let's coming back to this uh, auto increment attribute so whenever i do leave that particular value this auto increment will automatically dump the value in the desired table please remember the fact that auto increment will always create integer value please focus here okay these are the concept here it will always start with one and can you see the incrementation pattern it is incremented by one always one okay if you want to alter the incrementation you can't do it in mysql one yes your answer is right it's one if you want to change the incremental pattern guys you can't one thing now one question arises that what if if i provide a value here for example 33 and this is c now tell me guys should this statement execute successfully what do you say okay should in the sense what i meant that is this logically correct what you say is my action correct hmm 
now okay i'm trying to provide a value for that particular column which already has something assigned to it so basically this is illogical but still i would like to execute and check whether we are allowed to provide a value to that column whose values are automatically generated let's see it got inserted successfully guys yeah. okay yes yes this was incorrect guys okay but i just wanted you guys to know that it will take a value you will not get any error okay it you will never get an error but please don't do this if you are doing it this then there is no sense of using auto increment value now tell me guys 33 i think my 33 was according to the rule of primary key do you agree all don't you think my 33 value was according to the primary key which i have defined here that's why it got executed successfully guys now tell me one thing now see i inserted 33 it got inserted what happens if i execute this d1 I'm executing and creating another row with D. Let us execute. Control enter. It got successfully executed. The thing to be focused on which value it took. Did it took 4 or did it took 34? These, this is the confusion I would like to clear. Please observe the output everyone. Yes, primary key don't allow repeated values, duplicate values. I hope everyone can see the list. D used the auto increment, but the auto increment is starting from 33 plus 1. Clear to everyone? Okay, now see this. Delete from. Okay, okay yes. Delete from. Uh, it got deleted successfully. This is the data. Now, guys, if I execute this particular A, it got executed. What will be the ID assigned to A? Any guesses? What will be the ID that would be assigned to A? Is it 1 or 35? Right. Let us see. Okay. Good. I will go for 35. Please see. 35. Because the auto increment is being incremented, right? So if you delete the particular row, it would be 35, not 36. Is this clear to all of you? Yes, Harsh. Okay. Now, this is auto increment okay in a particular table guys only one column will be assigned with auto increment i hope you guys remember that in a particular table there can be multiple unique constraint defined on it okay so let us try and create multiple auto increment attribute yes this statement deleted this one because this particular a had an id one that's why just for the sake of example guys i'm giving i'm taking an id again integer 
I'm defining it with unique and assigning it to and sequence. Okay, that is auto. Auto increment. Specifically, I'm taking also a kind of another ID, uh, which will be, for example, wait, let me take it here. Uh, let's have, take out serial number. Serial number, integer type, and this would be again unique. Unique, putting a column here. Auto increment uh, ID. Sorry, it got removed. Hmm. Please observe the fact that I am trying to generate IDs automatically with the help of auto increment for serial number and ID. This is my intention. Let us implement this. Please see the error which I am getting. Whenever you are trying to assign a column to an auto increment please remember that one table will have only one column assigned to auto increment attribute is this clear to all of you okay please remember one column okay and that to auto increment Great. Okay. Now, this was all about uh, auto increment. Okay. You can check the last generated sequence ID with the help of last insert ID. This will give you a value which was lastly used. This was the last use ID. I hope you guys remember at the time of deleting, I inserted again A. This time it took 35. This is how you can check the last sequence ID generated in the session. Is this clear to all of you? Yes, good question. See, uh, I'm assigning auto increment to a column. We are assigning auto increment to a column. What is the maximum limit? What is the maximum value that auto increment generates so guys it depends upon the data type which you are specifying i hope you guys remember we covered data type in the last session we talked about a maximum range for in begin yes or no guys tiny in. do you guys remember we have talked about the maximum values for all these numeric data type okay so the sequence maximum value depend on the columns data type against which you are defining the auto increment value for. This is what I want to tell. Okay. For example, I created an auto increment for that column, which has an integer data type. An integer data type has a maximum limit as we have seen in the last session. So it changes according to the data type specified. Is this clear to all of you? That's the maximum limit. Uh, okay, great. Is this clear to all of you? Okay. Okay. Like sequence, guys, we have one more concept here. Let me uh, drop the table. Drop table uh, employees, which I just created above. Default, okay. Default is a keyword with the help of which we can give our own value. For example, uh, I'm just writing a string value, not provided. This is the default value which I want to specify. Now, what actually this default value does? Basically, guys, if you remember, whenever we try to 
insert a value and if we don't give any value to that particular column by default what value is inserted can anybody tell me if we don't specify a value for a column guys what is the default value that is assigned to that column yes very good null means nothing yeah very true so see guys i hope you remember the problem with null null is a value that is unknown unavailable and as unassigned sometimes it is very difficult to do some expressions with null so what i'm doing instead of whenever the user don't provide any value instead of accepting null please provide a default value like this that's the main implementation of default let us go and insert any row insert into employees okay please see that i'm just providing values for sid column one row got successfully created please see instead of null being inserted the value which we provided for default has been inserted that is the main role of default clear to everyone you can use anything guys the only the fact is that you don't want null you just want whatever a default value should be specified this default value works best with the combination of not null okay not null restricts null value to be inserted any question Any question, anyone? Anyone would like to ask anything with respect to default, guys? Very important. Shall I continue? Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is a very simple but very useful case instead of supplying any null value. Okay. Now, When we talk about performance, guys, okay, we talked about view here, which may increase the performance of fetching the data. There is one more concept which is used to improve the performance of the database. I'm very pretty much sure that all of you have heard this word, yes or no. Now tell me very simple example where you guys have heard this word, where you have used it. Simple, okay? Good. Books. No, I just am asking a very simple example, guys. Not any. A technical answer okay i'm not saying what are indexes we i hope we all have used this particular indexes through books that was the very first experience okay now why did you guys use indexes what was the purpose what was the purpose of using indexes yes topics reference no problem 
can i say that uh, to locate the chapter we were using this particular index to locate a particular chapter we were using this particular index which is created in books okay now guys okay locate a data i mean to say we can directly jump to the desired chapter when we were doing so what was increased what was the benefit which we were achieving can anybody tell me the benefit yes speed good we were achieving speed okay to locate a chapter guys imagine if there were no indexes created for us and i told you guys to uh, open chapter number 5 then i think it would be very time consuming okay and lots of efforts would have been implemented to locate chapter 5 good okay speed i will write speed here now tell me guys uh, what if yes what if every time when i am opening a book i am reading from the very first page every time guys i am reading i am starting reading from the very first page and ending at the very ending page so do you think i will be using indexes in a book i have an index but every time i am starting from the very first page and completing the whole book yes very true okay whenever we are reading all the chapter guys i don't think so we will be using index okay the same concept you have to focus here as well okay whatever we normally implement in real time scenario the same thing happens here index will always be used whenever your intention is to read 2% of data 2% among the all the data that is there if your intention is every time you are reading all the data that is saved in the table then index will not be used that is a main implementation here also is this clear to all of you okay okay now when we how can we create an index in the mysql database how can we create an index on the table first thing to be noted here guys uh, index can be automatically created as well index can be automatically created or it can be manually created now when it gets automatically created it gets created automatically when you define a column with primary key or unique constraint whenever guys you define a column with either primary key or unique constraint automatically an index is created manually you can create an index by using this create index statement or command is this clear to all of you when the index gets created okay now please focus that constraint are very useful okay with the help of constraint there are so many advantages guys constraint not only checks the correctness of the data but also from now we can can i say that it also increases the performance of the statement will you agree with this answer everyone constraint implementing constraint can also speed up the access to the row yes okay now when we talk about indexes guys performance is a key performance is used to implement everything but i hope you remember guys i have a table like this in which i am having now 18 rows these are the rows that are there please focus on the time taken to retrieve these many rows it was this okay duration and fetching time this was the fetching time so to increase the performance let me tell you guys creation of index is good so to justify my answer let me execute a statement sorry
Okay, I think I deleted this code. How many Smiths are working in my company? Okay, good. Now, uh, see, I'm just going here, guys. Okay, I'm clicking onto this icon, which is in towards the right. Can you see a tab has been opened for me? I'm going down. Please see this. Full table scan. Full table scan is that scenario in which I want you to jump to chapter number five and we all are starting from the very first page. Okay, that is full book access. This is full table scan. Is the word clear to all of you? This full table scan. Now tell me guys, is this a good uh, good implementation? I just want to jump to chapter number five and we are reading the whole book. Is this good? Okay, see your efforts. Efforts is something we will be, the time will be consumed much more. Okay, we will be wasting some time. The same thing is happening here. Please note down the query cost. Okay, that is 2.05. Now, what you will ask me, guys, what is the query cost? Nothing to do with SQL, but it is to be done with tuning purposes. Okay, the performance, the processes which were involved from fetching the data and showing it to us. This was the query it cost. Okay, now what I will do, guys, let us see if creating an index on this particular column will implement some benefits or not. So what I'm doing, I'm creating an index here. Create index, the name of the index, it's ID F. This is a simple name which I'm giving. Create index ID F on the table name and the column which we are using in the where clause. Control enter. Please see that my index got created successfully. Again, I'm doing the same process, guys. I'm going here, down. Now, please see, okay. I hope the block is con converted to green. This means it is okay. One row was only read to fetch Smith, okay. Please see the cost. It is drastically reduced to 0 0.35. Now, tell me guys, creating index is good or bad according to whatever you have seen. Good. Please see, our ID index has been used, one row has been fetched and the cost is reduced more than. The more the rows, guys, the more will be the cost you will be seeing. So index is beneficial, okay, which proves it. Second thing, guys, okay, you can create index for all the columns that are there in the table, but according to me, don't do that. Create an index on only that column which you are using for any joining purposes or where you are filtering the values. Is this clear to all of you? Okay. Join the concept which if you remember, we joined two tables in, in here also while creating a view. This one. This one. In which can you see? This is a condition. I hope you agree with this. Don't you think this is also a condition? So why don't we create a view on, uh, sorry, index on for this two columns? Okay, then the performance will be increased. I hope you got it joining okay great okay now i'll move back to the questions okay which are normally asked when we talk about indexes guys what are the types of index that will be created let me tell me guys yeah uh, this name column will it have duplicate values what do you say in future do you think this column will have duplicate values 
good okay it may have possibility that it will have duplicate values so whenever you create an index on such type of column guys the nature of that column will be non unique the nature of the index which we create is a non unique type of creation but whenever you talk about these type of implementation because automatically an index is created when you define a primary key or unique constraint okay this means that you are creating a unique type of index this is the thing so there are technically two nature of index unique and non unique is this clear to all of you yes or no what is non unique duplicate okay are you asking when it would be unique and non unique is that the concept okay see it depends upon the data okay basically for name for job kind of columns in which we feel that the values will definitely be duplicate then you will never use a unique type of index on that you will always define a non unique index that's the way how we implement okay see if your intention for example phone number okay phone number is that column in which definitely everybody will have a different value i hope you agree with this answer phone number is that column which will always have different numbers in it right so basically you are writing a uh, a select statement i hope you guys nowadays what we use in an application with the help of phone number we try to locate the customers okay yeah i got the point that in phone number we can have a constant unique but what if if i'm not putting any unique constant in this particular column but still i'm using it in my application so definitely i will be assigning a unique type of index in it. is this clear see how to create a unique type of index guys the simple statement is can you see i wrote create index name of the index here you just have to add one word create unique index the name of the index index name on the particular table and the column which you are desiring to implement this unique index for but in mysql it is not implemented why because you already have a sh short implementation why you are doing so lengthy implementation is this clear to all of you any question on index yes sir we please ask this one meaning okay see uh, this is a syntax which i gave you okay actually what i meant was create unique type of index see in this particular we didn't we didn't mention the keyword unique this means that the type of index created was not unique okay but if you if your intention is to create a unique type then how would you do it okay then you have to mention this keyword unique index the name of the index is id let me take uid as an index name on emp and please do imagine there is a phone number column in that emp with the help of this statement you just created unique type of index that's the statement i referred you i hope you got it ravi now
Okay. Anybody else would like to ask anything? Yes, it's syntax. Trigger. Harsh triggers are nothing but the stored programs which are revoked at the time of any event occurs. Okay. That event can be either insert, update, or delete. That's trigger. Anybody else would like to ask anything? Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thank you all. Yeah, so Amar, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. You can go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, hi, students and faculties. Uh, Irfan, this side from EDL team. Uh, so moving ahead, I would like to thank our trainer, Renu Nair, for her wonderful and fruitful sessions on SQL. Then I would also like to thank all my dear students and faculties from various colleges for attending the Python and SQL program. So dear faculties and students, uh those who have uh, who are having 60 percent and above attendance they will get a participation certificate from xlr within next eight working days okay and uh, the i would like to request to all the faculties who are attending this session now that uh, we have uh, this vertical and uh, if uh, your colleges has not uh, done MOU with XLR, then uh, you can just uh, put your uh, contact numbers or you can uh, shoot out a mail uh, to XLR that is EDL at the rate XLR.com so that our uh, MOU coordinators of various regions can uh, reach out to you. So this is, uh, this is uh, our kind request. Then uh, I also request an appeal to all the faculties and students. Please subscribe to our uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook handles, as well as just subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, also, you can visit to XLR website for more updates. Now, I'm glad to announce. Basically, rather, XLR is glad to announce the next EDL free 30 hours program, which will be on application based program using advanced Excel, Word and PowerPoint. This this upcoming program will be very helpful to all the students and faculties, because you know that nowadays data analytics is a very emerging field in IT industry. So Excel is very useful for data analysis and data analytics. Also, Excel is also useful in office automation and various IT operations. So I request to all the students and faculties that stay tuned with us. We will be launching this program on 7th of November, 2022. That's it from my side. Thank you all of you. Over to you, Amar. Yes, sir. I think you covered everything. Uh, guys, those who attended six and more than 60% of attendance, you will receive your certificate via registered mail ID. Okay. Within next eight working days. Guys, if you have any question, huh, then just post in chat box. And registration link for next program is already shared in the chat box. Please fill the form. Yes, assignment.
you will get the assignment in LMS within next three to four days. With answer key, yes. Guys, any questions? Yes, Prasanna. Today is the last session of Python programming and SQL. Yes, from seventh of November, we are going to do. Yeah, yeah. We are going to start advanced Excel, PowerPoint, and Word for thirty thirty hours. No need to download certificate. You will get a certificate copy via mail. Irpan sir, my voice is audible now. Yes, yes, you are yes, yes, audible. Yes, okay, okay. Giridhar question is there. Shall we get today's recorded session on LMS? Yes, you will get the today's recorded session on LMS. Guys, any more questions? You must please post the attendance links once again in chat box. Okay, ma'am. Nishan, please drop a mail on edl at the xlr dot com for your query. Yes, Ruina, yes, SQL is completed. Today is the last session. Uh, Ravi Karan, sir, I have the doubt. Yes, Ravi Karan, you can ask me. Okay, Ravi Kiran, you can drop a mail on edl at the rate xlr.com. Sure, you can drop, Ravi Kiran, you can drop a mail, we'll provide the information. Not please drop a uh, xlr mail. Okay, wait one. Yeah. Sai Krishna Bhatan will upload the SQL material also. Yes, Ruina, when we plan up, then we'll update you. But Rajesh, for that, please drop a mail on edl.exla.com. Ravi Kiran. Which link you need? Mail. Mail is edl at the lot xlr.com only. Your certificate will get yeah 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 within next eight days via your mail only. The mail which you used to follow fill the attendance form na on the same mail. Ramesh, if you attended sixty or more than sixty percent of sessions na, then you will receive a certificate within next eight working days. Yes, uh, 56, Vishwakarma Kiran, 
Please answer, sir. Tirunath, please force the attendance thing once again. Yes, Vakar Ahmad, thank you. I hope everything is covered now, then we can wind up the session. Yes, thank you all of you. I hope you enjoyed the sessions. Irpan sir, can we wind up now? Yes, Samar, yes. If uh, there is a no questions from uh, students and faculties, then we can um, close now. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Tirmat, you can wind up now. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Yes.